When approaching a steady yellow traffic light, drivers should a. Accelerate to avoid a red light. b. Continue driving, as they have the right of way. c. Slow to a stop, unless they are already within the intersection. d. Check to see what the cars next to them are doing. c. Slow to a stop, unless they are already within the intersection. A steady yellow traffic light indicates that a red light is about to appear. Stop unless you are already within the intersection. If you are stopped by a police officer, you should a. Unbuckle your seat belt and lower your window. b. Get your paperwork ready before the officer reaches your car. c. Stay in your vehicle with your hands on the steering wheel and wait for the officer to approach you. d. Get out of your car and walk toward the patrol car. c. Stay in your vehicle with your hands on the steering wheel and wait for the officer to approach you. If you are stopped by the police, keep your hands on the wheel and ask any passengers to keep their hands in view as well. You should remain in the vehicle unless the police officer asks you to get out. Wait until the officer asks you to retrieve your driver license, registration, and insurance cards. How can you lower the risk of hydroplaning? A. Do not speed when the roads are wet. B. Use tires with proper air pressure. C. Replace tires with bad tread. D. All of the above. D. All of the above. Hydroplaning happens when a vehicle glides on top of a thin layer of water between its tires and the road. Tires with low air pressure or bad tread can increase the risk of hydroplaning. Speeding also increases the risk. While driving on a two-lane road without bicycle lanes, you encounter a bicyclist traveling in the same direction. What is the safest way to pass the bicyclist? A. Slow down and wait until there is no traffic approaching, then pass the bicyclist while leaving him or her sufficient space. B. Continue driving straight. It is the bicyclist's responsibility to get out of your way. C. Do not pass the bicyclist until you come to a traffic signal or stop sign. D. Honk at the bicyclist to let him or her know you are about to pass. A. Slow down and wait until there is no traffic approaching, then pass the bicyclist while leaving him or her sufficient space. You should pass a bicyclist the same way you would pass any other vehicle, but not so fast or close to them that you throw debris in their face or blow them around with the draft of air from your vehicle. Allow at least 3 feet of space between your side mirror and the bicyclist, or at least 5 feet on higher speed roads or when there is a group of bicyclists. Honking unnecessarily may startle riders and make them more likely to crash. Want to ace your DMV test? Click on the link below and get your guaranteed cheat sheet. What should you do when you see this sign? A. Look for a train station ahead. B. Signal before going any further. C. Slow down and yield for trains. D. Stop. C. Slow down and yield for trains. This sign indicates that there is a railroad crossing on the road ahead. You should always slow down when approaching a railroad crossing. Trains cannot yield to cars, so you must let them pass before crossing the tracks. A red arrow displayed on a traffic light means that A. A driver must proceed slowly through the intersection. B. A driver must stop and then proceed when the way is clear. C. A driver must stop and then proceed when the signal changes to a green light or green arrow. D. 
A driver may turn in the direction that the red arrow is pointing. C. A driver must stop and then proceed when the signal changes to a green light or green arrow. Unless a posted sign indicates otherwise, a traffic signal displaying a red arrow means that drivers must come to a full stop and remain stopped until a green light or green arrow appears. This sign means A. There are trucks hauling gravel ahead. B. The highway ahead is under construction. C. The highway ahead is covered with loose gravel. D. The highway ahead has been sanded for icy conditions. C. The highway ahead is covered with loose gravel. Warning signs are used to warn drivers about upcoming hazardous conditions and are usually yellow with black markings. This sign tells drivers that the upcoming road is covered in loose gravel. Drivers should use extra caution when driving on a gravel road because their tires will not have as much traction as usual. This sign means A. No right turn. B. You must turn right. C. Watch for traffic on your right. D. Don't park on the right side of the street. A. No right turn. A sign with a red circle and slash over a symbol indicates that the action represented by the symbol in this example, a right turn is not allowed. This sign means A. Pedestrians only. B. Intersection ahead. C. Hiking trails ahead. D. School crossing ahead. D. School crossing ahead. This sign indicates that a school crossing is ahead. You may honk your horn when you A. Have to stop quickly. B. Are passing another car. C. Have lost control of your car. D. Are passing a bicyclist. C. Have lost control of your car. One situation where it is appropriate to use your horn is if you lose control of your vehicle. In this case, sound your horn to alert other drivers. If you see this sign above your lane, you A. May not exit the freeway. B. May either continue through the interchange or exit the freeway from your current lane. C may stay in your lane and continue through the interchange. D. Must exit the freeway, if you stay in your current lane. D. Must exit the freeway, if you stay in your current lane. If a yellow panel with the message, exit only, is on a highway sign, the lane below the sign will not continue through the interchange. Instead, the lane will go off of the roadway to form a ramp. If you are in a lane directly under an exit only sign, you may change lanes to move through the interchange or you must exit the highway. When you see this black and yellow sign, it means A. The road to the right is for one way traffic only. B. That due to upcoming roadwork, there is a detour to the right. C. Slow down because the road ahead changes direction at an extreme angle. D. There is a crossroad to your right. C. Slow down because the road ahead changes direction at an extreme angle. This sign indicates that the road ahead changes direction at an extreme angle, in this case, to the right. Before you reach such an extreme curve. You should slow down as much as you would when making a turn at an intersection. To help prevent crashes, you should A. Communicate with other road users. B. Ignore other drivers on the road. C. Drive only on side streets and back roads. D. 
Avoid driving during rush hour. A. Communicate with other road users. Crashes often happen because one driver does something that other road users are not expecting. You should communicate with other motorists, bicyclists, and pedestrians by doing things like signaling when slowing down, stopping, or changing direction. Use your emergency signals or horn when appropriate. Your vehicle's stopping distance increases when stopping. A. On a wet or icy road. B. On paved highways. C. When driving at night. D. All of the above. A. On a wet or icy road. Stopping distances increase on wet or icy roads. Stopping distances also increase on road surfaces covered in loose gravel or stones. This sign means A. No U-turn B. Two-way left turn C. Minimum speed limit D. No parking A. No U-turn Regulation signs regulate traffic speed and movement, displaying rules which drivers must obey. Wherever this regulation sign is posted, U-turns are not permitted. You are driving in the right lane of a multi-lane highway and want to move into the left lane. You should A. Look in your rearview mirror for traffic behind you before changing lanes. B. Look over your left shoulder for traffic in your blind spot before changing lanes. C. Look in your side mirror for traffic and turn on your directional signal. D. All of the above. D. All of the above. Before changing lanes, you should always verify that there are no other vehicles in the lane you want to enter by checking your mirrors and looking over your shoulder in the direction you plan to move. You should signal every time you change lanes. Your vehicle strikes an unattended parked vehicle and you cannot locate the vehicle's owner. You a. Have done as much as you can. B. Must stay until the police arrive. C. Must leave a written notice containing your name, your address, and the circumstances of the accident. D. May go on your way. C. Must leave a written notice containing your name, your address, and the circumstances of the accident. Upon striking an unattended vehicle, stop and try to locate the owner. If you cannot find the owner, leave a written notice containing your name, your address, and the circumstances of the accident. This sign means A. School ahead. B. School crossing. C. Pedestrian crossing. D. Construction workers on or near the roadway. C. Pedestrian crossing. Warning signs are usually diamond-shaped with black markings on a yellow background. They alert drivers to upcoming hazards. This sign indicates that there may be pedestrians crossing the road ahead. This sign means A. Stop sign ahead. B. Lane closed ahead. C. Railroad crossing ahead. D. Traffic signal ahead. D. Traffic signal ahead. Warning signs are usually diamond-shaped with black markings on a yellow background. They alert drivers to upcoming hazards. This warning sign indicates that a traffic signal is ahead and drivers should prepare to react to a yellow or red light. This sign means A. Two-way traffic. B. Lane shifting. C. Low clearance. D. Added lane. A. Two-way traffic.
Warning signs prepare drivers for upcoming road conditions and hazards and are usually yellow with black markings. This sign tells drivers that they may encounter traffic coming from the opposite direction. To help relieve fatigue on a long trip, it is a good idea to a. Stop and rest every two hours. b. Do arm exercises every hour. c. Drive with one eye open at a time. d. Change feet on the gas pedal. a. Stop and rest every two hours. To avoid becoming fatigued while taking a long trip, Stop every two hours for a short break. If you become drowsy, pull off the road and park in a safe place to take a nap, or find a room to stay for the night. When driving in fog, you should use your A. Low beam headlights. B. High beam headlights. C. Parking lights. D. Hazard flashers. A. Low beam headlights. If you must drive in foggy conditions, you should use your low beam headlights, as well as your fog lights, if your vehicle has them. High beams direct their light upwards, where it can bounce off the fog and into your eyes, reducing visibility even more. When driving on slippery roads, you should. A. Use alternate routes. B. Drive as you would on dry roads. C. Increase your following distance. D. Avoid crossing bridges or intersections. C. Increase your following distance. On slippery roads, you should increase your following distance. It may take more time to stop your vehicle than it would under normal conditions. A double solid yellow line down the center of a two-lane road indicates A. Lanes are moving in opposite directions and drivers are not permitted to pass. B. Lanes are moving in opposite directions and drivers are permitted to pass when it is safe to do so. C. Lanes are moving in the same direction and drivers are not permitted to pass. D. Lanes are moving in the same direction and drivers are permitted to pass when it is safe to do so. A. Lanes are moving in opposite directions and drivers are not permitted to pass. Yellow lines are used to separate traffic moving in opposite directions. Solid lines indicate that drivers are not permitted to pass. The sign with this shape and color is a fill in the blank sign. A. No passing zone. B. Wrong way. C. Railroad crossing. D. Stop. A. No passing zone. Pennant shaped warning signs like this are only used to indicate a no passing zone. What is the number one killer on Montana's roads? A. Poor or unkempt roads. B. Inclement weather, driving conditions. C. Drunk drivers. D. Excessive speed. C. Drunk drivers. Nationally, over 23,000 deaths occur yearly as a direct result of drunk driving. In Montana, 50% of all traffic fatalities and over 2,100 injuries are alcohol-related. Drunk drivers are the number one cause of fatalities on Montana's roads. When parking your vehicle downhill on a two-way street. A. Turn your wheels to the right. B. Turn your wheels to the left. C. Keep your wheels pointed straight ahead. D. Leave your transmission in neutral. A. Turn your wheels to the right. When you park on a downward facing slope, turn your wheels sharply toward the side of the road. This way, 
If your vehicle starts to roll downhill, it will roll away from traffic. This sign means A. No right turns. B. Right turns are permitted. C. Stop before turning right. D. Sharp curve ahead. A. No right turns. A regulatory sign displaying a red circle with a red slash through the middle indicates that a specific action is prohibited. Right turns are not permitted where this sign is posted. You are coming to an intersection with a flashing yellow light. You should A. Stop and wait for the light to change. B. Make a U-turn because the intersection is closed. C. Drive carefully through the intersection. D. Prepare to stop, the light is about to turn red. C. Drive carefully through the intersection. A flashing yellow light means that you should proceed through the intersection slowly and with caution. Scan your eyes across traffic in both directions. This sign means A. Narrow bridge ahead. B. Lane ends or roadway narrows ahead. C. Industrial area. D. Freeway on ramp ahead. B. Lane ends or roadway narrows ahead. Warning signs are usually diamond shaped with black markings on a yellow background. They alert drivers to upcoming hazards. This sign warns drivers that the right lane is ending or that the road is narrowing ahead. You are driving on a highway divided by two solid yellow lines. You may a. Cross these lines only to make a left turn into or from an alley, private road, or driveway. b. Cross these lines to pass other vehicles, but only if there is no oncoming traffic. c. Cross these lines under no circumstances. d. Cross these lines only to make a U-turn. a. Cross these lines only to make a left turn into or from an alley, private road, or driveway. Double solid yellow lines are used to mark roadways where passing is prohibited from both directions. You may cross these lines only to make a left turn into or from an alley, private road, or driveway. To change lanes you should A. Check your mirrors and signal, then change lanes. B. Signal. Check your mirrors. Check your blind spot in the direction you plan to move, then change lanes. C. Signal. Check your mirrors, and change lanes. D. Signal and change lanes. If you're going to turn left onto a one-way street, you should complete the turn into A. The right lane. B. The lane closest to your previous lane. C. Either lane. D. Neither lane. B. The lane closest to your previous lane. You should always turn from the lane that is closest to the direction you want to go. Turn into the lane closest to your previous lane.